Welcome into the latest 1v1 here at Soccer Down Here. I'm Jason Longshore. Joining us, frequent guest of the show, John Aiken, head coach at Oglethorpe University. How are you doing, John? Doing well, Jason. Thanks for having me. Yeah, always. Let's let's get caught up on the Stormy Petrol season for those on the outside looking in. You come in four straight regular season conference titles, knocked off in the conference tournament championship match last season on penalties, and, and the goal from day one was to get back to the NCAA tournament. And this has been a, a really interesting season. We talked at the beginning, and you mentioned how many young players you had that were coming through that were going to play significant minutes and watching it, it, it you've seen so many new faces so many new freshmen playing big minutes for you this year yeah it's been surprising to be honest with you we have so many um we we probably have the, the biggest senior class that we've ever had in in my 17 years as the head coach um, and very, very talented, probably the the best team overall, certainly as far as depth goes. Um, but due to some injuries, due to some, you know, various things going on, we've, we've had some freshmen step up and, and kind of, um, you know, uh, step into roles and, and do really well right away, which, you know, um, what kept me up at night wasn't this season. It was how do we turn the page with so many talented, talented seniors that we'll lose and, um, you know, uh, it, it alleviates my anxiety knowing that we're going to have so many good players in house, even without the 2020 recruiting class. So I'm, I'm excited about the future. Season started off really well with two wins in the Sonny Carter Invitational over at Emory, then a win over the Crosstown Rivals Emory. And I know beforehand we talked about the importance of the trip to Virginia and the non-conference games and, and watching those on video, I thought that the team played really, really well and was unfortunate not to get a win in those two matches, both narrow losses. Yeah, I mean, in in reality, we challenged ourselves, you know, with eight uh, very difficult, you know, at least seven of very difficult games in our non-conference schedule, in our eight-game non-conference schedule. Um, the games that we lost, we were clearly the better team. Um, you know, we had success and obviously we, you know, we were the, the highest national ranking we ever had was 12th. Um, we bested that by being third in the country, um, starting out four and oh, heading into that Virginia trip, um, against two strong teams. Um, but as you mentioned, you got a chance to see it online. I mean, we played both, you know, certainly Washington Lee off the park. We were number one, they were number two in the region. And, um, just, I mean, it could have been five zero, um, you know, uh, 25 minutes in the game. We just, their goalkeeper had a blinder, um, Lewis Sharp, our goalkeeping coach, uh, he said he's never seen a season where opposing goalkeepers have absolute world worldies, um, you know, against like so flashbacks times. to Atlanta United matches occasionally. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, um, you know, so so that was uh, it, it. Really came down to just a few individual mistakes, which I think we learned from um, in those games. We were a little flatting. You know, lost two one to to um, uh, to Lynchburg, and they're a tough physical side. You know, they're they're more they try to bang you around. Old school college soccer, um, and we missed a penalty in that in that game. I mean, you know, the refereeing was suspect, which we we're, we're going to get away from home. Could have been two or three other penalty kicks, you know, called and they didn't. But the one we got, uh, we missed. Um, and you're not going to win many games when you're missing penalties. So um, that was the first leg of the, of the road trip. And then we turn around and respond extremely well, run all over, you know, WNL um, at their place, and um, you know, just you know, 46 seconds to go, kind of a dumb uh, mistake on the side where we gave up a free kick, and then. You know, um, we have a freshman center back in there where, um, you know, Bentley Skinner, our, our, our very strong center back, had gone out about 30 minutes earlier with an ankle injury. And, you know, new freshman in there. We had a couple other guys going in there and just a little, you know, they attacked the ball a little bit before we did and miscommunication with the goalkeeper. And, you know, they went 2-1, um, you know, 46 seconds to play, kind of really stole the game from us, uh, which was frustrating. But, you know, I mean, we, we you know, we, we've done – 
we responded well um, outside of the Roanoke game. I mean, the Roanoke game, uh, again, I mean, three ODAC teams that we were clearly better than, and we lost to all three. Um, the Roanoke games, you know, keeper stands on his head. We missed three or four breakaways. We hit the post. They clear a few off the line, and, and we're flat on the day. Uh, but we were still getting those chances even being flat. So um, good signs of, of you know, how talented we are, but we've got to realize that we've just got to execute and put, put teams away early where we can't give them that belief that they're as good as we are. So um, I think we've learned from that, uh, and that's what a challenging non-conference schedule is all about. Um, and then, you know, we've kind of uh, – we go into the repeat of the conference finals last year as we open up with center and, you know, responded well. So – Here's what I've been really impressed with is is after losing three or four to the ODAC teams and and playing good soccer in all of them. There wasn't a, a dip in the overall performance level. Roanoke was maybe the one that was the weakest, but like you said, there were still plenty of chances. It's still a game that Oglethorpe can win. The bounce back after that against two very difficult opponents and two very physical opponents in center and then on the road at Swanee, Two wins, a 3-1 at home against center, a 2-1 at Swanee, that both showed a lot of grit. And for a young team to maintain the style of play that you want to see, but also be able to fight in matches and get these results, I think it shows a lot about the development of the group overall. Yeah, I, I think um, you know we we played extremely well in the two losses in Virginia. We didn't play well at home, but we still created chances. And I think there was a little bit of well, hey, you know, wh- is the world against us? Uh, I mean, how do these goalkeepers have blinders like that? You know, how what is our role in all of this? Um, and we had a little bit of the probably the first twenty minutes, and you were there. You know, the first twenty minutes of. Um, the um the center game was a little bit of a hangover from that Roanoke like how can we be that much better and just come up short and center really kind of took it to us those first 20 minutes and then you know we bring on our you know uh, returning all-american Ryan Marcano who's coming back from injury and missed so many of those games and you know uh gets in behind him and 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 you know we draw the the free kick and then Sebastian Carlson um, you know, puts it in the top corner. They've got a red card, and we really kind of stole their heart from there and kind of ran all over them. Um, you know, I think that was that response. It was, you know, I'm glad we kind of came out of that cloud um, and competed and then kind of turned it on its on its head and, and really kind of stuck it to them. And you were there. I mean, you know, um, it, it could have been 6-1, um, you know, the way we kind of turned the screws on them, you know, in the second half um, and just, just kind of ran them to death. Um, and then we go up to Swanee, a tough competitive uh, team. Uh, they were actually, I think, they were first on on. Um, they had more wins than we did, or something like that. And then we we uh, you know um, we won that game. It was one of those Swanee as a believe it or not, Swanee has a smaller field than we do. It's only about one fifteen by by sixty, maybe sixty one yards wide. It's an and, and it's a nightmare to play there. You know, so we're up there. We're kind of all over them. You know, two zero at halftime. Um, but we're dealing with, um, they have a kid who has a, a, an insanely long throw on a 60 yard wide yes. field. He's basically throwing it in from midfield. And I've actually never been a part of a game where, um, there's been a player who touched it more with his hands than, than his feet. Uh, but this kid, <laughs> this kid certainly did. Such a and weapon. Must, it must have been 35, you know, long throws. And, you know, we worked on that in training. Um, and now we have a starting freshman goalkeeper, um, Yuli Rodriguez from, from New Jersey. And um, uh, Cedar Stars Academy, Tab Ramos' Academy, he came out of up there and uh, held his own. And more than held his own, he had, he had, a, he had a great game um, in a tough environment. And, um, again, a game where we're creating a lot of chances and we just have to learn how to just kill teams off and, and, and don't give them that belief. So they hung around a little bit longer. There was a question. The, the goal they scored was very questionable. You know, our guys are saying it didn't cross the line. Their referee gave it. Um, and obviously we don't have uh, VAR and goal line technology, so uh, it was up to their discretion and, and away from home. If it's questionable, it's going to go their way. So um, we responded. The that Rodriguez made late, I believe it was in the final two minutes on a free kick, uh, that looked like the moment where Ulysses Rodriguez really, I think, grabbed I think control of the team in a lot of ways. It, he pushes it off the crossbar. It's a massive save that it keeps that as a 2-1 win. 
Yeah, I mean, if if he doesn't make that save, we're going to overtime, and you yeah. never know what can happen there, especially the way the the officiating was going, and you know they're starting to believe in it and things like that, and it was, um, you know, uh, yeah, you know, and they fight hard, you know, and if they if the referee lets the game go a certain way, you know, they're they're using just you know the jerseys and the, you know pulling people around as, as as a tactic that that they're getting away with, so. Um, you know, Yuli really kind of stepped into that role and, and, and really kind of, you know, uh, grabbed it and, and, and embraced it. And we're, we're, we're thrilled that he's doing that because uh, the job was up for grabs after our, uh, um, you know, after the Washington Lee um, weekend. And, and, you know, he got his shot and, you know, hadn't looked back. So now five matches left in the regular season, three at home, two on the road in conference play. Uh, the home match is coming up this weekend, doubleheaders with the Oglethorpe women's team. Birmingham Southern coming to town on Friday, Millsaps coming on Sunday. You know, how do you manage the, the, the vibe of the team right now as you have some tough opponents coming, but you're also looking ahead to the conference tournament because that's the route back into the NCAAs? Yeah, I mean, I, I think really it's about getting back on form. Um, we didn't play well at Swanee. I mean, we, we really didn't. Um, and we didn't really play a, a solid 90 minutes against center. Um, and we were subpar against, you know, Roanoke. Um, we have to just really be clinical with our finishing. I mean, we are tactically creating lots of chances. You know, we're really minimizing what we've been giving up, which is was really kind of something that we struggled with early in the season. And... Um, and so I think we've tightened up the defensive side of things, even without Bentley. Um, Josh Labus, a freshman, has come in and really done a good job um, in that role, him and, and Alan Hernandez. And um, we've just got to – we have a responsibility as an attacking-style team to, you know, not only create those chances but have the the mental um, toughness to, to take them when we create them. And, and, you know, you just – you know, I think we're averaging like 19 shots a game, something insane – like that and we've got a you know it shouldn't be two it should be six or seven or eight with some of the chances that we're creating so um i mean that comes down to individual responsibility and and we have some seniors we have some older players that we put that responsibility on their shoulder and they they either embrace it um to 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 tuck those things away or or you know there's other guys that are kind of chomping at the bit to to get those opportunities to to say hey I'm going to be the guy that's going to put the ball in the back of the net for the team so um it's it's good with regards to um the competition within the team but we're trying to find that you know we've had this you know rotating lineup due to you know injuries and you know Gabe Alvarez was out with the hamstring and Ryan Marcano was out with an ankle injury you know, uh, Matt Ward was out with a concussion. Um, we, we've had this, you know, uh, constant Logan Lano was out for the first five weeks of the season. So we've been trying to figure some things out internally. And then now I think, you know, uh, with regards to your question, it's getting back on form and seeing what that starting group is, what that rotation rotation looks like, and then just really being much more clinical with our chances. Because, again, even though we've gotten results, I don't think we've played well actually since – um, really played on form as, as well as we could have since that Washington Lee loss. So I think if we get that back on track, the rest of it will take care of itself. Walk us through how difficult it is in a situation like Bentley Skinner's injury and figuring out how to replace him. I mean, this is probably one of the strengths of the team coming in with Sebastian Carlson, Bentley Skinner at, at center back, and Andrew Grodhaus in front and Josh Bronsdorf in front of them, where you've got that core in your spine. And you yeah. lose one element of it, and yeah. I, and, I know. I, we're, we're, and you got to add, you got to add Christian Wagelin in there too, yeah. right back, who's an absolute rock. I mean, you know, and Wagelin's you know, moved inside some to replace. Uh, like, yeah, he, he did, he did because the um, problem Davis, solving is, has been really interesting. Yeah, yeah to watch. I mean, and, and that's really what it is. And it, I mean, it's you know, there's there's no rest for the weary in, in the season. You know, you have these injuries, and you have two days to prepare, and then you've got you know a game on a weekend. I mean, Josh Labus was out. Um, he was out for six weeks. Um, he got injured in our Mercer game and just came back, you know, roughly a week and a half ago. 
two weeks ago. So, um, you know, it's, it, you know, it, you know, Allen was out with a broken nose halfway through preseason. You know, it was, it's been this, you know, hodgepodge and, and Sebastian Wagelin and Bentley were, have been the one consistent thing. Wagelin over four years, mm-hmm. Sebastian over two years and, and Bentley over three years. And those guys, we just, we didn't have to work with that group very much outside of review because they knew what we wanted. And then when you, you know, you pull a guy out like Bentley, it's, you know, it's, it's getting everybody on the same page, trying to understand tendencies, um, you know, seeing how people, you know, want to receive the ball, you know, communication factor, um, you know, you've got older guys, younger guys, um, you know, it's, it's, it's tough, um, to try to get that continuity. So, you know, we obviously have a very high standard for ourselves here, and um, it, it's tough to achieve that standard when these these groups of this collection of players haven't played together, you know, very often. So, you know, I'm hoping that this stretch that we're on right now can give us some continuity. I mean, you know, uh, it was a weird one. You know, we Gil uh, Gilberto Ramos, who's started out at left back, we've kind of Stephen Summeros kind of taken over that role. We tried Gil at left mid because Afonso Temporal, who's another stalwart over you know, was our one starting freshman last year, you know, and, and started every game this year, he was out with a, a skin uh, staff infection. So, you know, he, he didn't play. So that kind of, you know, threw the timing off a little bit. And, and you know, we all, we've all we also changed our formation um, within that to try to, you know, alleviate some of those other areas. So it, it's there's been a lot of change in the team. And, and I think, you know, what we'll try to do this entire week in training is just, you know, get the amount of reps – get on the same page, you know, through the activities that we'll, we'll be working on this week to, to, to get everybody thinking as, as kind of, um, you know, one collective body. And, and I think if we do that, we've got the quality to, to really put on a show and, and, and we're, we're going to explode offensively in, in, in a few of these games. And I'm just, I'm hoping we start out with it on Friday night. How difficult is it when you, you get these injuries, you get players who, who leave the group for a little bit, you put someone else in the group, the personality of that group changes. How difficult is it to manage that in such a short college season? It's really difficult. Um, and I would love to say I have all the answers, but that that's not true. I mean, you, you basically have to rely upon instinct. You have to rely upon, you know, just, you know, what you do in training. And then, you know, it's a different stage in a match and, and then seeing what works and what, what doesn't, um, and 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 we've been doing a lot of that lately. I mean, honestly, this whole season has been a little bit like that, which is a little unexpected from us. Um, but I think it's a testament to how deep we are, uh, where we believe in the players, and they're getting chances, and you know, and, and they're you know they're they're taking advantage of it. So um, I, I think we're a little bit closer than we have been with regards to what's the right recipe for success. Um, you know, and, and, and I'm hoping that this is going to be, you know, we're going to kind of set it right for the rest of the year here, starting out Friday night. So, so Friday night, Birmingham Southern come into town, seven o'clock kick for the men, the women kick at four thirty. Millsaps, the men kick at three thirty on Sunday afternoon and the women kick at one o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? That, that is correct. And Birmingham Southern sitting in second place. So this is a battle for first place in the league and possibly, you know, hosting. Um, so it'll be a really big one Friday night. It's a huge one with the conference tournament being probably the only route for an SAA team to get into the NCAA tournament. Hosting becomes critical and, and games like Birmingham Southern, then the two matches on the road next weekend, and then Barry coming to town on senior day at the end of the month. It's a busy month ahead for you. It is. It is. I mean, and, and as the other kind of crazy statistic is, I think it's 24 matches unbeaten in conference play. Um, our senior class has never lost a conference game. Uh, actually, I don't think they've. I think we, we've maybe. Yeah, they, they they haven't lost a conference game, um, and I think they're like won like 22 in a row or something like that. So. Um, there, we'll let's just hopefully they finish out as strong as they've gone the rest. Uh, uh, the other three and a half years they've played so far in the driver's seat so far, but there's still a lot of work to do. John, thanks for the time this morning. Really appreciate it. And see you on Friday. Absolutely. Jason, look forward to it. Thanks for having me and we'll see you Friday.